Welcome back to the Family Table Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Casto, and I'm so excited that you took the time to join me for episode two. Listen, prophetic words are starting to swirl as we're going into the new year, 2022. Many voices are going to be telling you many things, but let me tell you what God has not stopped saying. It's time to rebuild the family altar. If we intend to see a nation reborn, it begins with family altars being restored. So on today's episode of the Family Table podcast, I want to give you three ways you can rebuild the family altar going into 2022. But before we do that, let me share with you just a couple of announcements, uh, some exciting things that's happening here. I just launched a brand new book called The Shepherd's Tent, Embracing Rest in God Amid a Chaotic World. I released it on Amazon. You can go there now and uh, purchase a copy. I'd love for you to do that. I've also created an e-course for people who want to take the journey further than just the book, and you'd like to journey with me as the author. Uh, we've did we, we've done an incredible eight video lesson e-course for you to jump in and take the journey with us. I'd love for you to be a part of that. If you find yourself addicted to busyness, success, productivity, this book is an invitation for you to find a new pace for your life, untethered from time and the opinions of man, to hear a new sound of divine romance in the rhythm of the realm of rest. I want to teach you that rhythm. I, my books are not really formulas, but they are invitations. It's exposing how your life is and how it's brought chaos into your world, calling you out of that busyness, calling you out of bowing at the altar of productivity and giving you an invitation to join Jesus in a new pace. And so I'd love for you to jump in, get the copy of the book, take the e-course journey with me. And if you want to find out where those links are, they're in the show notes below. Okay. Let's jump into the podcast. I told you we're going to talk about three ways for you to rebuild the family altar in 2022. So let's jump in. Number one, it begins with you, dad, making a decision to reintegrate your family into the rhythm of your life. In Deuteronomy chapter six, verse seven, the Lord's talking to fathers and he's saying, listen, here's my statutes. Here's my decrees. Here's the testimony that, that I want you to teach to your children. I want you to raise them in my ways. And this is what he says, Deuteronomy 6, verse 7. And you shall repeat them diligently to your sons and speak of them. Listen to this. When you sit in your house, when you walk on the road, when you lie down and when you get up. So there's a lot of opportunity here where the Lord's saying, I want you to integrate your family into your rhythm. Again, says do it when you're sitting in your house, when you're walking on the road, when you're lying down, when you get up. So let's talk about when you're sitting at your house. The thing that I would love to see you do as a husband, as a father, is to prioritize dinner time. You need to sit down at the family table. Rebuilding the family altar is a table. It's a table where you sit down with your wife and your children and you talk about life the things of God, what God's saying, what God's doing, not only in you, but in the life of your wife, in the life of your children. Your family needs a conversation daily together about life, what God's saying and what God's doing in it. I challenge you to do that. It says for you to teach them as you're walking on the way. That's taking your kids with you on the journey taking your kids to the store, taking your kids to the grocery store, taking them to Home Depot and Lowe's, taking them to, to wherever it is you're going, bring your kids along for the journey. And when they're on the journey, teach them about God's ways. Teach them about what God's saying, what God's doing. Also, put them to bed. I love this. This is one of my favorite times is to go in with my children as they're lying down for bed. Many times I will get stories of revivalists and stories of men of God who have really said yes to a devotional way of life to Jesus. And I'll take those books and I'll read stories from those books to my children to build their faith, to show them church history, to show them how God's been faithful to men and women for, for, for thousands of years. So it can be the Bible. It can be books that, that burn in your heart, autobiographies of great men and women of God. Take those books 
Tell their stories to your children. They'll absolutely love it. So, so put them to bed with stories. Wake up with them. Remind them of God's plan for the, their life. Tell, tell them today is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Build their expectancy early in the morning to be grateful, full of thanksgiving and have eyes that are peeled and ears that are open to hear and see God in the midst of their day. So reintegrate your family. That's the first thing. The second thing is if you're going to rebuild the family altar in 2022, second thing is this, you need a Sabbath. Husbands, fathers, if you're going to lead your family well, you need to bring the Sabbath back into the rhythm of your life. Now, listen, because of Jesus, we live in a perpetual Sabbath. We live in rest and trust in him. We live in what Hebrews calls the confident realm of trust or faith. And so I love that. But I also love taking one day out of the week to actually make a Sabbath, a day where there's no work, a day where there's no cell phone, a day where there's no email, just Jesus and family. And listen, if you have built a world where you can't shut off your phone and you can't answer emails, you have made yourself an idol to someone else. You need a time where the world can run its course without you. God is able to take care of your business, your ministry, other people without your involvement one day a week. So shut the cell phone off. Don't answer emails, just Jesus and family. Babylon has so enslaved many of us to the idea of how to get ahead that he has successfully removed the head out of every home. And what the Sabbath does is reestablish you as a man back at the head of the table. It establishes you as a man back as the priest of your home and says, you know what, family, one day a week, we are going to make it about Jesus. We're going to make it about this family. We're going to shut down the noise and the distractions, and, and we're just going to have a blast together as a family. It's a day dedicated to Thanksgiving, spending quality time with your family, drawing close to Jesus. Our family loves to play games on that day. We love to take walks. We like to just do fun activities around the house. Um, we will get creative and make things. And then we love having a Sabbath meal where we cook together and we prepare the table together. And then at times we'll invite friends and kingdom family to join us around that table for that quality time. And we'll take communion together, pray together. It's an amazing time. So please, guys, you need a Sabbath, a day dedicated to rest, Jesus, family, he loves it. The most spiritual thing many of you could do is take a nap and just enjoy the life that Yahweh has given you. Focus on the garden that God has given you, your wife, your children, and nothing else. And in that one simple act of one day a week, you are rebuilding an amazing family altar in your home. Okay, here's the last one. Number three, for you fathers, bless your children. Lay your hands on them, and as a father, bless them. Even do this for your wife, man. Maybe you don't have kids. Bless your wife. Lay hands on her head as a man of God and prophesy, speak blessing over her life. Listen, in the book of Genesis, Jacob has 12 sons, and Jacob gathers around all 12 sons, lays his hands on each one of their heads, and prophesies over them the word of the Lord. And guess what happens? Everything that he said in blessing them, came to pass in their life. It's a powerful thing, man. It's the power of a blessing. Samuel did this as a spiritual father to, to Saul before he was king. And the Bible says he was turned into another man. What could happen if you understood the authority God has given you as a husband, as a, as a, as a father, and you started laying your hands on them instead of depending on preachers and pastors and leaders to do it for you? What if you made the decision, I'm going to rebuild the family altar this year going into 2022. I'm going to lay my hands on my wife and children. I'm going to bless them. I'm going to prophesy over them. I'm going to declare over them. I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. You are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You are a lender and not the borrower. If we bless them and said, I bless you with divine health today, that sickness and disease could not dwell in your body. I bless you with divine direction for the footsteps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. 
Lord. Come on, man. I feel it when I'm talking about it. Lay your hands on them and bless them in the name of Jesus. Prophesy nothing but goodness over them for all the days of their life, that with long life would Yahweh bless them and show them the salvation of the Lord. So I'm just telling you, man, if you want to rebuild the family altar in your home, reintegrate the family into the rhythm of your life. You need a Sabbath day de dedicated to rest, Jesus, and family. And you need to start blessing your children, prophesying over them. Because rebuilding the family altar is, is a major deal, guys. And it may be the most prophetic thing, the most significant thing that we could do as it relates to saving cities and nations. I'm serious. When I say that, some, some people just let that go in one ear and out the other. But what I just told you to do could actually be the thing that saves your city and saves a nation. How can I say that? Genesis 18, verse 17 through 19. Yahweh revealed to Abraham his plans for the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, that, that because sin was running rampant, the judgment, there were angels being sent there to bring judgment to that land. And Abraham was told by the Lord prophetically what was about to happen and, in, and was invited and entertained by the Lord with intercession over rescuing those cities to spare those, simple, those cities simply because Abraham was faithful to do one thing, raise his family in Abba's ways. I'm telling you, raising your family may be the most prophetic thing that you can do. Uh, the, the greatest act of spiritual warfare that you could do is not screaming at demons. It's raising your children and loving your wife. I'm telling you, man, I feel fire on this because some of you love the supernatural when it's all mystical and weird. And we're talking about Jezebel and talking about demonic spirits. And I'm telling you that demons love the attention that you give them. But 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 what what the demonic world doesn't want you to know is if you learn to put your trust in Jesus and take responsibility over your garden, you can actually, by doing things God's way, bring order to the chaos, just like Adam and Eve were intended to do in the garden without even having to focus on the demonic. And many of you, I feel this by the Holy Ghost, are having to deal with demons because you have no order in your life. You're dealing with demonic forces because you've not taken responsibility over your marriage and over your children. And the greatest act of spiritual warfare that you could do is stop screaming at Jezebel, stop screaming at these demonic spirits, and start taking responsibility as a man to be a husband and to be the father that you always called you to be. And I'm telling you, man, Look, look just, just look at this. Genesis 18, 17 through 19. This is how God determines to tell Abraham what's going to happen in, in Sodom and Gomorrah and invites him into intercession. You ready? The Lord said in verse 17, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Since Abraham will certainly become a great and mighty nation and in him all the nations of the earth will be blessed. For I have chosen him so that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice so that the Lord may bring upon Abraham what he has spoken about him. Guys, just as God chose Abraham to command his children and his household and to keep the way of the Lord, to keep the way of the Lord, just as he has chosen Abraham for that, he has chosen you to do the same. You have been chosen by God to rebuild the family altar. And in doing that, you become a key to sparing cities and nations. Guys, I'm telling you, man, you rebuilding the family altar in 2022 may be and it will be the most significant thing that you do. So in closing, before I go, I want to invite you to join me for a very special Facebook group for men that we call Head of the Table. If this podcast blessed you, provoked you, challenged you, you need to join this group. This group is dedicated to those who specifically, the men who listen to this podcast who say, you know what, I want to go deeper in identity as a son, uh, a husband, and a father. And all you have to do, just click the link below for the Facebook group, Head of the Table. I want you to jump into that group and say, Mark, I am committing as a man to rebuilding the family table and the family altar 
in my house this year. And I'm telling you, man, it's going to make all the difference in the world. So click that link. Join me in that group. Let's encourage one another. Let's challenge one another. Let's share victories together. Let's pray for one another. It's going to be amazing. And we'll do special events just for that group that is going to help you build that family altar in a greater way in 2022. It's going to be absolutely amazing. So again, I hope you enjoyed episode two from the Family Table podcast. I look forward to being with you on our next episode. God bless you. I want to take a moment and say thank you for listening to this episode from The Family Table. If this podcast was at all helpful to you, please tell your friends and family about it. Leave us a review on your podcast platform of choice. And I want to invite you to connect with me on Instagram at MarkCasto underscore. Again, that's at M-A-R-K-C-A-S-T-O underscore. And I look forward to connecting with you soon on the next episode of The Family Table podcast. May his peace rest upon you.